Hey guys, um, a lot of the YouTubers that I follow have been doing this dear 14 year old me, dear 15 year old me, dear 16 year old me kind of thing. And I find the concept really interesting and uh, I'd like to give it a shot. I cannot pinpoint gears like 15 specifically or 16 specifically because I'm a month away from turning 40 and that was a very long time ago for me. I don't remember specifically what happened year to year to year. So mine is going to be more teenage years to early 20s, I guess. I'm just going to kind of group it together because you know me, I don't make anything easy uh, and I don't do anything right. Uh, I get the feeling as I'm thinking of the stuff I'd like to tell myself that this is going to be an emotional video. When I had originally thought of it, I wanted it to be a lighthearted video, so we'll just see how it goes. I haven't kind of pinpointed what I'm going to talk about because I don't like doing that. It makes me feel like the videos are kind of scripted and set up. If I know what I'm going to say ahead of time, I just get a general idea. Oh, I definitely want to talk about this and this, and then I just kind of build it around that. So here we go. Dear young me, Diana, because that, that was my birth name. Uh, starting, I'd say, earliest adult, the young adult memory was when I went to the States and met my mom for the first time. So I'm going to start there from the airport, you know, preface there. Um, dear 12 year old Diana, 11 year old Diana, however old I was, um, you're in the airport on your way to meet your mom for the first time and your stepdad and your new family. And it is extremely scary. And you are wondering, if they're going to love you, if they're going to want you, if you're going to recognize them or if they're going to leave you there, don't worry. Your mom is there and she is very, very, very happy to see you. Before leaving, you thought that you were going to see your little sisters again. So you didn't think too much of it. The move didn't really feel real to you. Cherish them, hug them, tell them everything you want to tell them. Hope that they remember because you will never see them again. Uh, time and lies and drama will stop them from wanting anything to do with you. And so that last hug you gave them before you were taken away is the last time you will see them. Things are really hard. They're going to be very hard when you're young. Um, your mother doesn't understand what you've been through and your stepfather has a drinking problem. That doesn't mean he doesn't care. It just means... Maybe don't be such a bad kid. You know, stay in school. Don't steal their money and try to buy friends. Um, don't give them any reason to think that you're a bad kid and try to send you away. Just try to spend time with them while you can. Because they're not going to be around forever. Um, appreciate the fact that your stepfather adopted you and took you in as his own. And maybe instead of all the fights you guys had, maybe you could reach out to him. I mean, if it was possible, I'd go back in time and try to get him to stop smoking and things so that he wouldn't get cancer. Um, just maybe make more of an effort to make them proud of you for the time that they're there because they are the only parents that you'll ever have. And whereas your real father doesn't care if you live or die, he gave you his name and he adopted you and all those years wasted that will never ever come back because by the time you realize what you had, he's gone. And uh, so appreciate him while you can. When things start going sour with your sister, your older sister, be sure to try your best to talk to her and hopefully you and her can figure out that your mother is actually lying and setting you two against each other for unknown reasons that will save you from years and years of loneliness and hatred, thinking that your sister hates you when in reality she's been fed a lot of lies about you. Um, but your mother is still your mother and one day she won't even remember who you are and it'll be like 10 years since you've seen her and you will feel completely alone in the world. It is time for you to appreciate what you do have. Stop fighting, stop running away from home, 
and throwing little tantrums and feeling like you're not wanted. So everything is just made so much worse. You have to be the one to grow up a little bit and try to make, make it work while you can. And maybe if you reach out to them and tell them that you love them, maybe they'll calm down with you a little bit. 16 year old you, Diana, you are about to find out, not 16, sorry, 17 year old, you are about to find out that you are pregnant. And this is the only child you will ever have. So you need to take a bigger stand and do everything right this time. When your mother takes your son from you, you need to step in and demand he is your son and you have a right to hold him, feed him, change him, take care of him and raise him yourself. Don't leave it to somebody else because all that time away from him, um, whether you think you're doing the right thing for him or not, uh, in the end, it's time you've missed being around him. And I understand you're trying to be a good mom, but I feel like there was more you could have done. For instance, when you meet this guy at a concert, when you're 19 years old, um, 18, no, well, yeah, when you're 19 years old, don't marry him. <laughs> um, don't, don't just take the warning signs as soon as he shows the first sign of jealousy when he throws you up against the brick wall outside the house and tries to choke you for wanting to take the dogs for a walk. Run really fast because the next like five years of your life is going to be a living hell and you are going to put your son through some shit and you're not going to be able to protect him. Nobody is going to help you because of the previous fights with your parents. You are going to have nobody and you and your son are both going to suffer and it's going to do irreparable damage to both of you. Um, your son is going to grow up completely different and who knows how he would have turned out if he didn't have a childhood like that full of fights and full of abuse and whatever else happened that I don't really want to talk about here. Just run fast. Don't think you're doing the right thing by giving him a father. Best he don't, he doesn't have a father and he has a loving mother. Then he has a father that's going to put you both through that. Um, life is going to continue to be hard for you and you're going to feel like nothing you do is right. And who knows if that's true, but you can't let it get to you. You can't, you know, just give up on life and Put yourself in the hospital time and time again you can't try to don't try to kill yourself you know i mean taking pills and then calling the ambulance because you're scared of what's going to happen next and then having your stomach pumped that's not something you want to go through don't don't do that i'm sure things weren't as bad as you thought they were at the time and if they were again maybe reach out for help this time. Don't just try to hold everything in and just get angry. You know, the things that you did because you hated everybody, because you felt so alone, you know, the cutting yourself, carving up your face, you know, those scars, you're going to live with the rest of your life. Be unique, be yourself, be strong, be open, and don't be a bitch. Don't trust people. Put your son first. Put yourself first. Love your parents while they're there. Exercise. Get addicted to exercise straight away. Listen to your mom when she says stop eating so many sweets because you grow up to get fat and get diabetes, although that has to do with kind of moving countries and stuff. But still, appreciate American food while you can. And get addicted to moving. Exercise so that way walking or running isn't a hassle and you can just be like, yeah, I'm fit and... You know, join a gym maybe, like put your energy into something like that. And, you know, you used to love playing hockey, man, play some hockey or something. Um, don't get tattoos early on. Do not say, I want to get a tattoo somewhere that girls usually don't have it and then go to a shop that has no idea what they're doing and get this monstrosity that's not even finished. And then this monstrosity. Don't do that. Just wait and find a good artist and then get something really nice that it's not going to be like that. <laughs> uh, sure, everybody has that advice for their younger selves, but um, yeah. Um, most of all, stop and enjoy life. Um, I know you spent a lot of time, and you spend a lot of time 
just being angry and being like, why is this happening to me? Why doesn't anybody love me? You feel like nobody understands you. You feel like you're different. You don't fit in. People hate you. They call you a slut. They call you a whore. They make up shit about you. It's basically what's happening now, but in real life. And you let that affect the way you saw yourself. And because of that, you went on a downward spiral spiral for a while. It didn't take care of yourself. And it led to a lot of bad choices. But you need to realize that you are different and you are unique. But that's not a bad thing. You should find who you are early on. Don't be swayed by other people. Just find who you are and embrace it. And be strong in yourself. Be strong, be loving, be open, be caring. And put the right people at the top of your list. Don't ever try to get your son's father back. He is no good. And everything he tells you is a lie because he doesn't want to pay child support. Do not put your son through having his father walk in and out of his life as he's pretending he wants to be a daddy. But in reality, he's just using you both. Because when you see the pain in that little boy's eyes, when he wonders why everybody has a daddy, but he doesn't and why his daddy doesn't want him, it's up to you to answer that. And there are no words to explain to a five-year-old kid why his father doesn't want him and why his father will come to him and make promises and say, I'll always be here for you. I'll pick you up next week. You're my boy. I love you. And then you see him wandering around the house with this big smile on his face. My daddy, my daddy. And only for him to never come back. And you're the one left to pick up the pieces. Just, just know he's going to let you down. And you've been on your own since day one. So do not, do not let him in your life no matter how much you think it's the right thing for your son, in the end, it is not. And he's going to grow up and he's not going to want a dad. He's not going to want anybody because he's been hurt too many times. You've got to make the tough choices early on for your future happiness. Um, I guess that's about it. That kind of sums up, like, I'd say from 11 to 21, around that. Uh, if you guys liked this at all, I'll probably try to do like my early 20s before I got here and then I could try to do one from like my 30s once I was already here. There's only three videos I can make because I don't really remember enough of anything else before that to make any, you know, previous videos. Um, you don't know how bad I wish I could tell myself these things in real life and I wonder how much differently my life would have turned out. But at the same time, who knows? I wouldn't have Logan. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't look like this. I mean, everything that I am, I wouldn't be if I had taken that advice when I was younger. So it's kind of a hard call because on the one hand, I could have maybe given my son a better life. On the other hand, I, I thought I was giving him a good life and it still didn't turn out great. I mean... Maybe it's one of those things that you just can't change. You can only do the best that you can and it'll be how it'll be, you know. Uh, everything I did, I did trying to give him a good life and trying to give myself a good life. And I do wish that I could go back and be a bit closer to my parents. You know, you think your parents are always going to be there and you don't really realize that one day they're not. And um, I still miss my dad, my, my stepdad all the time. I wonder how things would be if he were still here and like, yeah, I miss him so much and there's so much that I wish I could say to him just one day, just one hour with him, you know, and just to have one last conversation and, and stuff. And, um, and my mom, you know, it's been so long since I've seen her and I, my sister hasn't contacted me. I don't know how my mom's doing. If she, if she would even remember me at this point and I, I've written to my sister and I've texted her and I've asked her to contact me and she hasn't and so I'm kind of I don't know what's going on with that either and I don't, I don't know if my mom's alive or dead though I would assume she would tell me if my mom was but you know you you fight with your parents and you think that you wouldn't care if they're not there anymore I, I can't tell you how many times as a teenager I said that I wish that my dad died or something and I mean the stupid childish shit to say you know like he had a heart attack and I remember being happy, you know, I was rejoicing. Oh, yes, he has a heart attack. What? He's not dead. And I'm so ashamed of myself for ever, ever thinking that. Um, I don't even know. I don't know 
where my mind was, but uh, I'm not that person anymore and I, I regret it so much and I just, I wish I had another day with both my parents just to tell them how much I love them and I miss them and I'm sorry for the stuff I put them through and those things can never be unsaid and undone and that's something I'm going to have to live with the rest of my life and that is why I try so hard now with Dorian because I know you have to appreciate what you have while you have it. You can never go back. As much as we might want to, we can't. And if we let these moments pass us by, they're gone forever and we're stuck making these videos, talking to our past selves, giving ourselves advice that we'll never receive. And so um, it's kind of tragic in a way and a little bit uplifting and refreshing and helpful, unburdening to kind of get it out and think, you know, where I am now is so far from where I was and I can get it out and if I could see myself now um I could learn a lot from myself you know but uh I hope you guys enjoyed this and it wasn't too boring and I will see you guys next video let me know if this is something that you enjoyed and you want to see more of I know it's not really happy like some of the other ones I've seen but so you know such is my life I guess and uh that was very condensed and I I didn't cry. I got close, but I didn't cry. So I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next video. Bye.